Welcome to the shooting show. Stand by for shots fired. Hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of the shooting show, and welcome to today's program. We're so glad to have you with us, as I always say, because we always mean it. Let me pat our audience on the back for uh, the response that we got in phone calls to uh, senators and congressmen, because, friends, it's you that that has at least delayed this crime bill from last week. Now, we don't know what's going to happen this week. As we're taping this, the president is trying desperately uh, to renew his crime bill, to get it passed by hook or by crook. And I think it's outrageous. The people have spoken. They don't want this thing. Yet, realize, friends, the people we're up against, the president, the Clintonians, the State Department, a lot of the people they've installed there, and a lot of them were there before Clinton ever got in office, what they want to do is they've got to get these guns away from us. This assault rifle ban, which, hey, if you were going to ban assault rifles from America, well, you'd have to disarm the military because they're the only people that really have assault guns. By any stretch of the imagination, the military is the only, uh, or the, is the only organization that has assault guns. We, as citizens, only have semi-automatic rifles. They're calling them assault guns to raise the emotions of some of these people who don't have a clue about what it's all about. Friends, it's outrageous. We've got to continue our work. Our fight has only just begun because, one, we've got to stop these people that want to disarm this country, who want to turn us into a one-world subject nation of the United Nations, and that's outrageous. We cannot allow it to happen. So, friends, what we've got to do, we have got not only to stop the legislation, these things that are going on now, we've got to get some rights back. We've got to get our country back in the hands of real Americans, people that actually care what happened to you and I. The people in Washington, they could care less what our situation is. They don't care because, you know what, in their position, well, heck, they're not afraid. They have bodyguards. They have security forces. What about you and I? And, of course, the reason that we have these rifles and these handguns anyway is not for hunting. Hunting had nothing to do with the formation or foundation of the Second Amendment. The reason was so we as citizens could, in fact, if we had to, take our government back from people that had literally commandeered it. And guess what, friends? Our government has literally been invaded by people who do not care about our rights as individuals. They want to have a socialist slash communist world order. That's what they want. And they've gone a long way toward getting it. And friends, we cannot allow this to happen. So we've got to keep these letters and phone calls and faxes going to the congressmen, to the senators. We have to let them know what, what we as Americans think. Because you know what? As we've said before on this show, these people in Washington do not want to have to come home and go to work. That's the best threat we have is literally relieving them of their job. And friends, we can see that, yes, our individual phone calls, our individual letters do matter. They do have an effect, as we saw this past week. What happens this week, I don't know, because Clinton is working day and night. See, these people really could care less about us. They're working day and night to force the gun issue, and that's what they really want. They can cut everything else out of the crime bill. They only want to take semi-automatics away from us. And believe me, this bolt-action rifle like this fine Browning stainless stalker uh, is not going to be far behind because it goes bang too. Talk about semi-automatic handguns, well hey this revolver goes bang and it functions, it, it fires every time you pull the trigger so they're going to eventually call that semi-automatic too. So friends, they've got to be stopped. Well let's open another shooting show. We have some great features for you today. And let's start our program, and yes we still have some watermelons. Let's see what happens when about 4,200 pounds of muzzle energy out of this 375 H&H &H, uh, Let's see what happens when it meets the ferocious Louisiana watermelon. Woo! <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I had to dodge watermelon pieces. <laughs> Friends, the first gun we're going to look at today is, in fact, this Browning Stainless Stalker and 375 H&H. &H. Now this gun has an interesting history. It belongs to a good friend of ours uh, and really uh, it was actually used by the person who had it before my good friend as a deer rifle. Now wait just a minute. <laughs> uh, no we don't have deer down here uh, in Louisiana that are in fact uh, that large but uh, I suppose he wanted to be pretty sure they fell where he hit them. 
but the 375 is a most unique caliber. It dates from about 1912, and honestly, to this day, we don't have anything that does anything or what the 375 does best. We don't have anything that really does it better. We have things that do different things. Certainly, there are more powerful calibers now, but the 375 is one of the most useful high-powered rifle cartridges ever made. Uh, from the 375 and certainly the 300 H and H, we have a whole family of cartridges that have evolved from that case. In fact, they're too numerous to mention. And we're going to be looking at the cases in just a moment of the cartridge size relative. But the 375, literally, you can hunt about anything from mice to moose to elephant to buffalo to bear, just about anything that walks, crawls, or slithers can be taken with a 375. The good news is you have adequate power for even the largest animals. And uh, some folks would say that the 375 is a little bit light for, say, Cape Buffalo or for Elephant, but with proper hits, they certainly will get the job done. It is an excellent caliber that can be handled by most people. Uh, I would think if you can shoot a 300 Winchester, well, you could certainly shoot a 375. Uh, this particular gun is very nicely made, of course, by Browning. Uh, it's stainless steel. It has a very fine Williams uh, sights on it. And believe it or not, this gun actually had a varmint uh, power scope on it. And hey, it won't be me to judge. If somebody wants to use varmints or wants to shoot varmints with a 375, more power to them. Uh, they just have a little tougher shoulder than I do. Uh, the recoil from this gun, and bear in mind, this is not a real heavy gun. It only weighs without scope, just as you see it here, about seven and a half pounds. Now, I was thinking that may be a little severe in recoil because you are talking about a 270 grain bullet moving roughly 2,650 or so feet per second, about 4,200 pounds of muzzle energy. And we saw a little earlier, uh, it does have quite a bit of shocking power on what's left of our watermelon there. Uh, anyway, that is a lot of power. Now, this particular gun has some sort of synthetic stock, and I'm going to uh, guess that the synthetic stock here takes up some of the recoil because it really doesn't uh, hit you that hard. Uh, I've shot 458s, and of course on the show a while back we shot one of JD's for real big bore uh, elephant rifles, and it just doesn't seem to hit you that hard. The 375 has a trajectory about like a 30 out 6 which a lot of us as hunters are familiar with. And certainly for those of us who are not hunters and don't know what a 30 out 6 is, well, it was the U.S. military cartridge and has been in use and may still be, for all I know, uh, uh, in some areas of the U.S. military. 30 caliber bullet with uh, uh, finally uh, designated in 1906. That's where the out 6 comes from, the 06. And is one of the very best cartridges, uh, certainly, that's ever been made. Well, the 375 has a similar trajectory, so if you're used to shooting a 30 out 6 rifle, where well, you can go out and sort of have an idea of where your bullets are going to hit. Uh, this is certainly a longer range, uh, be a tremendous elk gun for larger and heavier game animals, would be a tremendous gun if you were going to hunt the larger bears. And really, uh, I think overgunned is sort of a state of mind. It's whatever you uh, like to shoot and can shoot comfortably. The 375 was would certainly be an adequate deer, deer cartridge. Uh, in fact, you just have so much more power than you need on, say, a smaller animal like a deer. But again, uh, that might, if you're practicing for a big game hunt in Africa or maybe in Alaska or, or Australia or some of these other places that have some large animals, well, you certainly could use one of these and, and practice shooting it on deer. Now, now, friends, we're looking at two of the finest small handguns that I'm aware of. These, of course, are from American Derringer Corporation. On your left, you have the Model 1, which is available in over 50 chamberings. And on the right is their Double Action Derringer, which is very similar to the old high standard design, except it's been modernized. This particular one is in the 38 Special Chambering. Now, friends, it's sometimes it's hard to have a large handgun with you, but you can always have one of these American Derringers. Call them, 1-800-642-7817. Now, friends, let's, let's take a look at our cartridges here, and you can see, let's start on the left here. We have the uh, very common 308 Winchester, and next to it, we have the 30 out 6. In the middle there, we have the 338 Winchester Magnum, and immediately uh, to the right of the, of the middle, 
we have the 458 Winchester Magnum, and over on our far right, that's the 375 H&H. &H. Now you can see there's quite a bit of difference in length, uh, and these are just some cartridges we had handy to give you an idea. Now then, the 308, for instance, has about 25, 2600 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. The 30 out 6, 27 or so hundred foot-pounds of muzzle energy. The 338 is pretty potent. Now it's not uh, far behind the 375. That 338 there in the middle has roughly 3900 or so foot-pounds of muzzle energy. The 458 Winchester has about 5,000 pounds of muzzle energy, give or take a few hundred there. And of course our 375, we're going to talk roughly 42, 4300. So the 375 is a good compromise between it has much better uh, aerodynamic characteristics, say, than the 458, which is uh, just about a straight wall case there, as you can see. Uh, and it has the ability to handle heavier bullets than our 338. So it is really a most useful cartridge. Now, friends, I want to show you something that I think a lot of you will find interesting. You see, the 375 has a belt on the end of the cartridge case there. It's what they call a belted magnum. And you see, they wanted a rimless cartridge that would feed through a magazine. But since you don't have a lot of shoulder here, in fact, not much at all, to headspace the round on, they uh, came up with an idea for a cartridge belt. Now then, on a case, for instance, such as our 458 Winchester would be another really good candidate for a belt to headspace on because here you have no shoulder at all. You have uh, very nearly a straight wall case here. But this idea has also carried over into newer and more modern cartridges like the 338 Winchester Magnum. Now you'll see we have a fairly sharp shoulder here on the 338, but it still retains the belt. Now let's take a look at our 30 out 6. It was with a sharper shoulder, certainly, than our 375. Uh, the 30 out 6 head spaces on the shoulder there of the case, and you have a true rimless design. Well, it was thought by a lot of people if you didn't have the belt, well, you wouldn't have a true magnum, whereas on certainly it's useful on a 375. But when you come to a 338, that belt is probably not necessary. In fact, we're seeing a lot of new cartridges appear on the scene that certainly uh, qualify as magnums, but uh, the belt does cause a little complication uh, of feeding in some magazines. It's just a little rough edge there that uh, has to go over another cartridge. So I'm thinking, in fact, uh, uh, we never thought of Magnum rifle cartridges as being especially subject to fashion, but in a lot of cases, in fact, this belt is indeed apparently just fashion. All right, friends, let's take a quick look at our Browning Stainless Stalker. Uh, you can see it has a very nicely fluted bolt, has a low lift bolt handle, also has a cocking indicator right here. Uh, and of course, here's your safety like so. It has a magazine that drops out, and you have a box here. Uh, very convenient. It holds three of the Magnum cartridges in the magazine. Of course, you could have one in the chamber for a total of four. Now, this gun has the excellent William sights, and uh, uh, really is not a bad idea on a heavy rifle uh, to have a good set of open sights. Of course, this is a scope mount. We're currently missing the scope. This is the takedown lever here. You just pull the uh, bolt up and if I'll take it off safe, it'll move. Pull it back and press the lever right there, and then the bolt comes out for ease of cleaning. The Shoot and Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Friends, all of us as shooting enthusiasts should be subscribing to Shotgun News, the trading post for anything that shoots. 
three big issues monthly with literally thousands and thousands of firearms bargains. Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska, the zip code 68902, their phone number, area 402-463-4589, MasterCard or Visa for subscriptions only. Now call them at 1-800-345-6923. You know, friends, I guess a recall is somewhat subjective. I guess that's somewhat uh, up to the individual how they deal with it. Well, let me do a brief demonstration here so you can check. Of course, this is the tremendous M1A from Springfield. We really appreciate them loaning us this gun. And, yes, this may be an endangered species because we don't know yet what the outcome. Friends, if we're going to get to keep these rifles, we're going to have to fight for it. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. We've got to make these calls. We've got to contact these senators and representatives. Let them know how we feel. Anyway, of course, this is in 308 Winchester, 7.62 uh, NATO. I believe I like the Winchester nomenclature there a little better. Well, let's take a look at, at this gun uh, off my shoulder anyway to give you an idea of recoil. There's just not a whole heck of a lot of recoil. Of course, this rifle weighs a little over nine pounds. Now then, for our 308 there, it gives you an idea of what it looks like. Well, let's take our Browning stainless stalker in 375 and let's let you take a look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little stouter. <laughs> Quite a bit actually, but certainly manageable. Uh, this gun has a 26 inch barrel and uh, some people might like a 24 inch. You're not going to lose a lot of performance, maybe 100 feet per second uh, by shortening the barrel to 24, but for a lot of us, the 26 is going to be fine. You certainly do get the optimum performance from your, from your load with that 26-inch barrel. Well, friends, needless to say, this is a very functional piece of equipment. This Browning, of course, anything that Browning makes is going to be pretty darn nice. Uh, they typically finish their guns, whatever it is, handgun, shotgun, long gun. And no, Browning has never bought any time with us, no commercial, no nothing, but they do make very uh, nice guns. and. The Stainless Stalker series is certainly one that we could highly recommend. It would certainly be more rust resistant than a counterpart in blued steel. It wouldn't require quite as much maintenance. Uh, some of us might not like the uh, glare characteristics of a stainless barrel, but uh, certainly for, for its intended purpose, this is one of the finest rifles uh, out there, and one we certainly recommend. Well, friends, we certainly can recommend the rifle. I can also recommend the cartridge combinations. This particular gun will put five shots into less than two inches at 100 yards. With the proper load, I wouldn't be surprised to see this gun group inch and a half out at 100 yards. And honestly, I don't know if the new uh, Browning attachment, the uh, their new accurizing uh, addition to their barrel, uh, we haven't fooled with one yet. I don't know just how well they work. I'm sure they work pretty well for Browning to have it. The 375 is literally a cartridge you can hunt anything from uh, varmints to elephant with and with the lack of recoil as compared to say a 458 or some of the 416s, I would think that would contribute to some people shooting it better because psychologically no, it's not going to hit you that hard, but uh, this is one of the do everything all around calibers that's certainly one of the best and uh, if you're looking to go bear hunting or you want to go elk hunting, or uh, of course if you want to go on an African safari, because a lot of people take 375s to Africa and hunt everything. Uh, this is one that you might want to take a look at. The recoil is, is manageable by any stretch of the imagination for the average person who is used to shooting a high-powered rifle. And the 375 is, is definitely a conversation piece. You know, friends, we're always trying to do something different and entertaining, and here's a special feature for the ladies this week that I think you're really going to enjoy. So let's make the first installment in the Lady Derringer Playhouse.
If you want information on the best Derringer that's ever been built, call us at American Derringer Corporation. 800-642-7817. If you enjoy shooting, you've probably used 10 cans as targets. Maybe it was when you were a kid and you shot cans at the dump. Maybe it wasn't so long ago. After all, it's still a lot of fun. Like the age-old pastime of shooting at 10 cans, metallic silhouette shooting offers the same fun and satisfaction with the added excitement a friendly competition. Organized by the International Handgun Metallic Silhouette Association, these amateur competitions are for pistol enthusiasts of any ability level and nearly any age. As with any firearms related activity, safety is an ever present consideration. In this atmosphere of safety consciousness, the whole family can enjoy shooting silhouettes. Regardless of individual ability, you'll be competing against those of similar ability. It's an excellent hands-on way to learn the proper and safe use of handguns. Because of the nature of silhouette competition, there is a surprising lack of competitive intimidation. Your competitor may also be your spotter. This promotes a friendly, supportive atmosphere, making it very easy to learn and get involved in silhouette shooting. The competitors coach each other. And usually what we have to do is, if my wife doesn't come with me to coach, another competitor will be coaching me, or I'll come be coaching him, spotting for him. And it's just as much fun for me to get a guy to shoot if possible as to shoot a possible. And this has happened. I've had a guy coach me into a better score than he shot to take the state title. The social aspect of silhouette matches can be very satisfying. You will meet people from all walks of life and watch casual acquaintances become fast friends. Many hunters enjoy silhouette shooting because it is an ideal way to stay in practice and become more familiar with the capabilities of their firearm. The shooting distances to targets, which range from 25 to 200 meters, are typical of distances encountered while hunting with handguns. Hunters and non-hunters alike get a sense of accomplishment as they watch their abilities improve. The competition being shown here is the inaugural Field Pistol Internationals in Tucson, Arizona. With safety as the top priority at any IHMSA event, you can see how safety procedures become automatic for all competitors. The example set by competitors makes proper muzzle control and correct pistol handling a natural practice. Whether you shoot in big bore, small bore, or field pistol matches, there is a class for your ability. Based on your first score, you are put into one of the five or six classes in the category in which you've just shot. As your scores improve, your classification moves up. As you can see, the three types of competition provide a total of 13 possible categories. A typical match has 40 targets. 10 animal silhouettes at varying distances. The big boar competitor faces life-sized targets. 
10 chickens at 50 meters, at 100 meters the pigs, turkeys at 150 meters, and past the length of two football fields, the 200 meter rams. Big bore competitors in the unlimited category often use a pistol like the customized Remington XP100. But your pistol doesn't have to be expensive. Many competitors in the production categories use readily available handguns like Freedom Arms, Dan Wesson, Thompson Center Contender, Smith & Wesson, or XL. The small bore or 22 competitor shoots the same lineup of targets as big bore, only they're smaller, thinner, and set at closer ranges, 25, 50, 75, and 100 yards. As the fastest growing IHMSA competition class, 22 matches are popular with shooters who own handguns as common as a Ruger 22. You'll also find competitors shooting pistols like the Anschutz Exemplar in the Unlimited category or Freedom Arms in the Revolver category. The variety of competition categories provide several combinations of firearms and shooting positions. In the production, Revolver and Unlimited categories, you shoot from a freestyle position using handguns equipped with iron sights. The two standing categories, called standing and unlimited standing, differ in the types of firearms used. Standing is shot with an iron-sighted production gun. In the unlimited standing category, you can use optical sights and a customized gun. Production guns, as the name implies, are essentially stock over-the-counter firearms with minimal alterations allowed. Conversely, unlimited guns are restricted only in terms of weight, barrel length, and sight radius. 22 competition closely parallels the big bore categories. The main difference is that the small bore production category is divided by action type into production single shot and production semi-auto. Field pistol matches are shot only from a standing position with production pistols. The two field pistol categories are differentiated by the type of sights used, open sights, and any sights. The targets are half size and set at 25, 50, 75, and 100 meters. Field pistol competitors use handguns like the Thompson Center Contender, the XL, or an MOA. As you can see, silhouette shooting is not expensive to get into. For instance, if you're shooting a 22, it might cost you only a few dollars in ammunition for one match. So, dust off the pistol you probably already own, pick up some ammunition, and come down to your nearest IHMSA certified range. Yearly membership in the IHMSA is nominal and includes an official membership and classification card, rule book, and a subscription to the IHMSA News which has match results, dates for upcoming events, and a variety of interesting articles about this unique international sport. Competitions are held regularly. There may be two or three matches a month in your state, and your local range will probably have at least one competition per month. Well, it's the people that make the sport. Uh, I travel many miles just to see the people that I shoot with and, and have shot with through the years. And uh, uh, shooting, of course, is a primary thing, but strong second is the people. If it weren't for the, the great people in the sport, why the sport wouldn't be any good. In silhouettes, uh, if you shoot it, you're almost hooked immediately because what you see is what you get. If you shoot and you hold the position correctly, you see the target go down, that scores a point. Uh, silhouettes is, is a good family sport because it uh, teaches people how to work together. It's taught you know, Jason and I how to work together as a team, and um, you know, it's the camaraderie of it. It's given him um, 
a level of competition that, you know, although he's quite a bit younger than the rest of the shooters, uh, you know, he still com can compete with. Yeah. yeah. Fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Silhouette shooting. The clang and tumble of a target. The encouragement of friendly people. The joy of competition. The fun of a family sport. The pride of becoming a better marksman. The assurance of handgun safety. Student Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. You know, friends, it's rare in any field of manufacture that one particular company has a clear-cut advantage over the others. Well, in this case, it's Corbon Ammunition, Corbon Bullet Company, because they make the best handgun, long gun, and even some specialty caliber ammunition that's been real hard to get in the past. If you really want your handgun or rifle to perform at their absolute best, you need to find some Corbon Ammunition. For information on where you can get Corbon, information on their product line, call them. Corbon Bullet Company, 1-800-626-7266. Again, give them a call. It's a free call. 1-800-626-7266. Trust me on this one. Corbon is the best there is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you're enjoying our program. Of course, uh, Judge, I understand the uh, gun rights rally in Washington turned out uh, real well. We're going to have some tape footage on that, hopefully, for, for our next week's program. But uh, I sincerely hope that it turned out well. I heard Gordon Liddy say that. So, I, I'm like you, I think we want to pat our Shoot and Show audience on the back for their efforts in writing and calling and faxing our congressman. Sir, we had some effect, didn't we? Well, Johnny, I hope we had some effect. Um, I don't know. I don't know what does it. Uh, uh, there, there, there's so many imponderables. Clinton wants to blame the National Rifle Association, uh, or shall I say give credit to the National <laughs> Rifle Association. <laughs> Frankly, I think Gun Owners of America and this program both had uh, uh, a similar impact. Uh, maybe logic and reason have begun to take over. And of course, we, we don't know, as we're taping this on Tuesday, uh, before our Thursday night, first broadcast on Thursday night, we don't know what they've got up their sleeve. We do know that Clinton has people coming in his office, a number of congressmen. He's telling them anything, whatever it takes, to try and change their vote. And I think that's just despicable. I think that the situation, uh, these people will not give up on uh, literally going against what the American people want. Well, it's pork, pork, pork. Uh, we, we know, for example, what, uh, uh, what uh, Representative... Uh, what's his name? The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Yeah. I'm thinking about Schumer. Uh, no, no, he's not chairman. Uh, the uh, Brooks. Okay, Brooks. okay. Congressman Brooks. Brooks. Okay. You know, the NRA just finished endorsing Brooks, and Brooks comes up and votes for the rule, uh, in other words, against the gun owners, uh, on, the, on the House vote. Uh, we got to be we got curious about what his price was, and uh, we discovered 
our gun owners of America discovered that uh, contrary to his previous votes where he's always voted with gun owners, that there's a little pork in the bill for his district, a $10 million grant to Lamar University, which happens to be in his district. Uh, I don't know what else there is in there for his district, but his uh, price is apparently $10 million. Uh, I, for one, as a life member of NRA, demand that the NRA withdraw its endorsement of Brooks. I demand that. I'm sick and tired of the NRA or anybody else who sub claims to be supporting gun rights to endorse people who vote against us. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, item for today. A couple of things I want to mention. Here is a uh, booklet that was sent to me by one of our listeners. Uh, for some time he's been trying to get hold of the uh, subcommittee on the on the Constitution when uh, it was in Republican hands. And it's a report on the right to keep and bear arms. Uh, it's long been out of print. You can't get it from the government printing office. But one of our listeners has gotten it, has put it on a computer, and has uh, printed it. It's, 200, it's 198 pages plus a few extra pages. Uh, very well done, I would like to add. It's on 24-pound paper printed on both sides uh, and bound. Uh, and he is printing it, and he wants, uh, I think he said he wanted uh, $20 for it, which is a bargain. It's actually costing him $21 to prepare it, counting postage. And uh, uh, he says he'll eat the, the extra $1 if he just get people to buy this thing and read it. Magnificent report, magnificent report. It goes into the history of the Second Amendment. It goes into the history of uh, in England of the of the rights of the kings and the and the Magna Carta and things like this and and how it was. Uh, uh, you know, in the early colonies, uh, there were laws requiring people to own firearms and uh, and to bring them to church uh, so they could practice afterwards. Uh, this is a good a good publication. Uh, let me tell you where he's located, so that if you want to order it, and it's a bargain for twenty dollars, and he says if you want to reproduce it yourself, do it. His name is M. E. Schwanbeck. S. C. H. W. A. N. B. E. C. K. M. E. Schwanbeck. Uh, H. C. Thirty-two. I don't know what. I, I guess that's Route 32, okay. Box 16, in Marcella, Arkansas, M-A-R-C-E-L-L-A, -L -L -A, Marcella, Arkansas. His zip code is 72555-9118. Uh, uh, I'd like to add that if someone has a question, if you have questions you'd like answered about, one, why we have the Second Amendment, where the uh, gun rights that we that we have come from, this is probably the best explanation or probably best compilation of, uh, of reports and explanations that, that I know of, huh, Judge? Well, yes, although there are two very excellent law review articles. As a lawyer, of course, I'm, I'm, uh, I kind of like law review articles because they're so well documented. Uh, there's a law review article in the Michigan Law Review, the Michigan Law Journal, that uh, uh, is about 85 or 90 pages long with over 200 and some odd footnotes uh, supporting, I mean, giving the historical background on the right to keep and bear arms. Mm -hmm. Superb article. There's another one written by University of Texas. Uh, uh, no, I don't know if he's University of Texas. He's from Texas. Uh, an advocate of, of uh, gun restrictions, incidentally, a Professor Levinson. Uh, his article in the Yale Law Journal is entitled the embarrassing Second Amendment. Embarrassing to him because he's uh, he's opposed to to gun rights, but he admits in that article, and it's a lengthy and scholarly article, that the National Rifle Association is correct. Well, there's uh, really no question with what the Founding Fathers had in mind. Well, yeah. Johnny, there's another aspect to it. Let me uh, let me get a couple other things that, that, that we that we need here real quick. 
We're ahead on the crime bill, but believe me, they're going to try something. Now we've got, now we've got the health care plan. Boy, boy. They want to put a 10,000% tax on expanding handgun ammunition. What they want to do is take all hollow points, any jacketed, anything that will, that will expand to larger than the diameter of the bullet, and, uh, and put a 10,000% tax on it. That's a hundred times. If, if a box of ammunition costs you about 15 or 16 dollars, which is currently what a, uh, a box of, of hunting ammunition costs, 15 or 16 dollars, and they want to add a hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred times tax on it, that means it's going to cost you 1,500 dollars. Now, that's a little bit absurd. The, it's not just a little bit absurd, it's a whole lot absurd. Uh, the courts, or people have said the power to tax is a power to destroy, and indeed that's true. The Supreme Court did say once, and I hope the present Supreme Court remembers it, that the power to tax is not the power to destroy as long as this court sits. Well, well, that's that is totally. Here we have people who don't know anything about. Well, maybe maybe I'm I'm misstating that. Maybe they do know because, you know, friends, if we were limited just to solid point or full metal jacket ammunition, one will have uh, an unbelievable number of injuries. We'll have police officers shooting each other, shooting through felons on the street. We'll uh, literally lose uh, our effectiveness on game animals with any sort of, because uh, a, an expanding bullet is a much less likely bullet to ricochet, much, le much less likely to penetrate and do some damage beyond the target. It is outrageous. Hey, they've got to be stopped. They have to be stopped. Well, this, this double dealing stuff really does disturb me. Uh, Congressman Newt Greenwich, the Republican whip, stated that the amount of the grant to uh, uh, Lamar College in Jack Brooks's district is not found in the copy of the crime bill that's been made available to the Republicans. This business of legislating without ever letting people know what they're voting on is just absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand why congressmen do it. The, uh, uh, the health care bill, four, 1,500 pages long. The uh, crime bill, it was over 500 pages long last time I looked. Uh, let's give this address again. Mr. M. E. Schwanbeck, S-C-H-W-A-N-B-E-C-K, uh, H.C. 32, Box 16, Marcella, Arkansas, 72555. Now, if you, if you can't remember that, write us, send us a check, uh, and we'll send it on to Mr. Swanbeck. He's got a good, he, he's, he's got a good item there. Uh, here's another one. We got uh, some campaign literature from Mr. Joe Slovenic. Slovenic is a candidate in Ohio, uh, Senate candidate in Ohio for Metzenbaum's seat, Metzenbaum's old seat because he's resigning. Good for us. Well, he's got a son-in-law running for it. Uh, on the Democrat ticket and some Republican running for it who's, no, who's not much better. Uh, so Mike Slovenic has, um, uh, has uh, filed as an independent, uh, not Mike, Joe. Joe Slovenic has filed as an independent candidate. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen in Ohio, vote for him. Support him. Send him four or five dollars. He can use it. And uh, ask for a bumper sticker. Do something for Joe Slovenic. There is a vote for our gun rights. You know, friends, this is really our salvation, is getting people in office who think like we do. And the problem is we as conservatives, we as gun owners, have sat around too long. And if we don't act now, if we don't support the decent people, if we don't find out what these people stand for, you don't have to worry. We won't any longer be gun owners. We'll be serfs. We'll be will be citizens of a socialist state because that's exactly what they want to do. A couple of things we need to mention, one of which our program on our Thursday night satellite broadcast is going to be moving back to Channel 7. We're on 23 as you're watching this on, on satellite on, on our Thursday night broadcast. This won't affect the outdoor channel. But we're moving back to Channel 7 on G4. Same satellite moving us back 
No, I don't know why, but yes, they are moving us back Channel 7 beginning September 1. Again, September 1 on our satellite viewers who watch us on Thursday night will be on Galaxy 4 Channel 7. And that will begin on September 1. So please, you engineers that are taping our program for rebroadcast, please make note of that if you would. September 1 would be moving back to 7. And certainly cable companies, TV stations, and all of us uh, who watch on satellite. So we want to be sure to mention that. Another thing, uh, let me squeeze in. Our, our labor <laughs> with the shooting show is pretty far behind on some of the replies. We've got, we get a ton of mail and phone calls, so please bear with us. Some of the orders we've gotten for the Bullet Express, we, we're uh, back ordered on some things, and we'll get that out to you just as soon as, as we can get them. Yes, sir, go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say, John. <laughs> Well, that's while you're thinking of what you're going to say, please, friends, we need you to join the Shooting Show Gun Club, uh, if at all possible, because it helps us stay on the air. We're, we're doing some tremendous things. We've got some of the greatest things in store. And let me remind you now, the Soldier Fortune Convention coming up in Las Vegas. Christmas Sub Club, Johnny. That Christmas Club. The Christmas that's Club. Wonder, all right. Well, let's talk about that. Then I'll talk about SOF. Go ahead. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Christmas fun. For the last several weeks, we haven't said much about the Christmas fun, and I don't know whether people have just kind of tuck it off, sending it in, or whether the post office department employees are getting into their letters, or whether uh, just exactly what's happened. Uh, maybe Johnny hadn't picked up his mail. In any event, we still need contributions to the Christmas fund. Uh, remember, it's less than five or six rounds of ammunition and it may go a long ways toward protecting your gun rights. Uh, we're going to try to get it in the places where it'll help the most. And in the meanwhile, uh, we'll do the best we can with what we have. Well, absolutely, friends. This is an ongoing struggle, and we do appreciate. Uh, let me remind you, please, let those sponsors know, let those people, those manufacturers know that they need to be working with us here at the shooting show because it's very expensive doing what we do. And it's... Uh, uh, certainly, we have a lot of volunteer help, and it's, it's every, every bit of, of revenue income that we can have from our sponsors really does help us. Let me remind you, we're going to be at the Soldier of Fortune Convention in Las Vegas, Nevada, September 14 through 18. It's going to be at the Sands Hotel, and we're going to be telling you how to get, you know, the Sands is such a nice place to stay. Uh, Las Vegas is a lot more than just a gambling town. Now, if it depended on gambling, hey, they wouldn't have any use for me because I'm not going to do it. But there are a lot of very, very interesting and entertaining things to see. They've got theme parks now. Uh, the, of course, there's Lake Mead. There's the dam down there. All sorts of things. They've got dancing girls, too. Well, now, <laughs> well, now wait. <laughs> I don't know if we ought to discuss. Now, that's up, to any, that's up to the individual. But anyway, they do have some great shows. Yes, I understand they have some great shows. And speaking of shows, the Soldier Fortune Convention is, in fact, a great show. And if you're a uh, Shoot and Show Gun Club member, you can get a 10% discount on registration fees. And so we're going to be telling you a little bit later, you can call Soldier Fortune. We have an 800 number of them if you want to register early. Uh, you do get a discount. And on uh, the days of the uh, manufacturer's show down at the convention center there at the Sands Hotel, uh, you're going to get a dollar off if you're a Shoot and Show Gun Club member. So uh, please, we're going to be there. If you're a Shoot and Show Gun Club or a viewer, look for us. We're going to have a booth there. And the young man here on my right is going to be there part of the time. We're trying to line him up there in the booth, uh, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> but we're going to be wandering around the convention. We're going to cover it. It is a great event. You're going to see about 10,000 people or so. 
uh, who feel just like we do and some of the nicest people you'll ever want to meet. So that, again, September 14 through 18 out in, in Las Vegas. Well, sir, let's go on back to our program. Well, you have something you want to add? The what? crime bill isn't dead That's yet, right. Johnny. That's right. So you need to keep up your calls to your congressmen, to your senators, uh, and while you're about it, just throw in. It won't cost you any more. All you got to do is say you're against the, the health care bill because, boy, the health care bill is going to be death to your gun rights. Absolutely. So people, please, our fight has only begun. Hello, friends. I'm out here practicing for one of the most fun hunting sports that you can imagine. You can use a variety of action types. You have access to uh, year-round hunting, some cases no limits, and you get to use a variety of guns. Well, you know what I'm talking about is a sport of varmint hunting. And we need to introduce you folks to varmint hunting. A lot of us have been doing it for years and didn't know what to call it. But we especially need to introduce you to the Varmint Hunter magazine. You know, friends, varmint hunting is one of the fastest growing shooting sports in the world. In fact, the Varmint Hunters Association they have members in all 50 states and 19 foreign countries. Now, their magazine focuses on varmint hunting and super accurate reloading and shooting techniques. Plus, there's a lot of humor, a lot of interesting cartoons and humorous articles in the magazine. Uh, incidentally, the magazine is large. It's very high quality and something I think you're really going to enjoy reading, and it's published quarterly. It's only $24 for an associate membership in the Varmint Hunters Association. And look, for information, now you ought to do this. If you're a dedicated shooter, this is something I think you're really going to enjoy. For information on the Varmint Hunter magazine and the Varmint Hunters Association, call them at 1-800-528-4868. Again, 1-800-528-4868. Be sure and tell them you saw it on the shooting show. Friends, you can communicate with the shooting show on CompuServe now. Our number is 735-42-3024. Again, 735-42-3024. And to join our shooting show gun club, call us at 1-800-895-7916. We take Visa, MasterCard, check money order, whatever you got. Join today, friends. We need to reach as many people as we can. Now, friends, we are extremely pleased to be working with one of the finest magazines that you can find in the United States today, and it's called The New American. And the April 4 issue, which you see on your screen, covers issues like toward a police state, using a national epidemic of crime and violence as their justification, media pundits and collectivist politicians are aggressively campaigning to disarm private citizens and strengthen federal law enforcement powers. Yes, friends, this is our type of magazine, mostly because it's true. Now, these people at the New American Magazine are making a special offer available to the Shoot and Show audience for $22 for a six-month subscription, including the April 4 issue here, which deals with gun control and the things that go on with the politicians in Washington on how they're literally trying to disarm the United States population. Now, trust me on this one. If you're a gun owner, you need to get this issue of the New American. And friends, this uh, magazine comes twice a month. This is really a bargain. They cover all sorts of subjects, such as the Somalian quagmire, as you can see. And how about national service? If you really want the true picture of what this national service uh, is all about. How about the conservative index for the 103rd Congress? Subjects like terror in Haiti, the real Aristide. How about Bill Clinton and a question of character, which is most important to, to most of us, certainly, as conservative Americans. And here's a tremendous article on the New World Army. Now, friends, this is one of the finest publications that I think you could find in print anywhere today. It is really a bargain, $22 for six months of the New American magazine. And remember, this is 13 issues, including this powerful uh, gun control issue. And friends, I don't think you'll be disappointed. This, in fact, if you want to be informed about what's going on in the United States uh, and all sorts of issues that are so important to every last one of us who are really patriotic citizens, you need to start getting the New American. Now, to get it, you can call them at 1-800-727-TRUE. 
and those numbers are 8783, 1-800-727-8783, and be sure and tell them that you saw it here on The Shooting Show. It is such an important publication for our time, friends, and to really be informed, if you want to know the truth about what's going on in this country and around the world, again, you need the new American, 1-800-727-TRUE-8783, the new American. Friends, I'll tell you what, I wish you could be down here with me today. It is so pretty, such a nice day to be out shooting. We've had a little cool front come through here in northwest Louisiana, and uh, heck, temperatures actually down to the high 80s with a lower humidity count than is normal. So it's really a nice day to be out. Well, we're going to look at one of the most popular guns of all time. This is the Model 10 Smith & Wesson. The Model 10 actually dates from the late 1800s, I believe 1899. I stand to be corrected on that. But one of the reasons it has been such an enduring design is the Smith & Wesson pretty much got it right from the beginning. And you notice we have a pair of these here. Uh, we had a good friend of ours uh, had these guns come in. These are surplus from some police department. I don't know where. They're marked somewhere, but it doesn't really say what they're, they're from. But this is from one of the surplus uh, supply houses. And these guns are a little bit beat up. They're not really that rough. But internally, uh, it, I'm led to believe they never were shot that much because they're as smooth as glass. Timing is good. I really don't know if they've been rebuilt or not. The good news is about these old Smith & Wessons is they can be rebuilt just over and over and over. So who knows what the actual life of the gun is. I don't know if you could actually uh, wear some parts of these things out. They're that, uh, that durable and rugged. Friends, we're going to come back to the piece on the Model 10s next week. I think you're going to really find that interesting. And for information on the Soldier of Fortune Convention, you can call them at one 800 800 seven six three zero for the soldier fortune convention information now for information on the beautiful sam's hotel you can call them got another 800 number 1-800-634-6901 they'll send you a brochure 1-800-634-6901 and remember for an extra ten dollars you can join the shooting show gun club and also get the uh, gun owners of america membership so 25 plus 10 35 dollars get our gun club and goa Well, friends, it's happened again. We've run out of time for today's program. From Kurt, the judge, myself, we want to thank everyone for being with us for today's program, and we look forward to seeing you on the next shooting show.